Hey there, my name is Mahdi and welcome to this video. This video is from the Ultimate Block Course playlist. If you haven't watched the previous parts, please watch them first and then come to this video. Today we are gonna do our first mini project with block. We are gonna implement a search function. So let's get started. Let me give you some great news. You can join our Flutter community on Telegram. Simply join this group to stay in contact with other Flutter developers to learn from each other and to become a better Flutter developer. So don't forget and join now. Here I have listed the steps that we are going to do. As you can see the first step is to add the Flutter block package to the project. To do this, open the pop.dev and then search for Flutter block. Open the first option, then copy the name and version of the package like this. Now we go to the pop-spec file and paste it in the dependencies. And finally, enter Flutter pop get in the terminal and that's it. The first step is done. So let's go to the second step. In the second step, we have to create block, event and state files. So let's do it. After creating the files, the first thing we have to do is to extract and define the states we will have. In order to be able to explain to you well, I'm going to use a whiteboard. As you can see, we will have three states. The initial state is the first state. This is the time when the user has not searched for any word and we show all the words in the list to the user. The next state is loading. This is when the user searches for a word and we display loading on the screen until the search in database or getting the result from the API is finished. Of course, we don't use API or a special database in this project, and we only search in a list of words. And the last state is when the search process is finished and the result is ready to be displayed. If words are found, we display them, and if no words are found, we display a text. Well, now let's go to define the states. The first class we need to define is a base class from which the rest of classes must inherit because all the states for the block must be of the same type. So first we define an abstract class called search state. Now we can define the three state classes that I explained and they inherit from the search state class. All right, this step is also done. As you can see, the next step is defining events. This step is exactly like defining states. As you know, the events depend on the user's interactions and the events are called in the UI. Well, in your opinion, when should we call the event so that we can change the states? The first thing that comes to our mind is when the user enters a word in the search field. At this time, we can call the event. So we can define an event called display searched words. By this event, we get the word entered by the user and search in the list of words and then change the state of the application. So let's define the events. As I said, it is exactly like the definition of states. First, we define an abstract class called search event so that other classes can inherit from this class. Now we can define a class named search word, which inherits from search event class. In this class, we need to get the word searched by the user. So we define a string variable and set it in the class constructor. Great, this step is also done. In the next step, we need to create the block class. First, we define a class called search block. Now, in order to use the block, we must inherit from the block class. So we inherit from the block class. If we look at the block definition, we can see that it says takes a stream of events as input and transforms them into a stream of states as output. So we have to pass the search event and search state classes as generic parameters to the block class, like this. The reason for this error is that the block wants us to specify an initial state. And to fix this, we can specify the initial state by passing it to the super class via super. So we pass exactly the same initial state that we defined in the search state file. In the next step, according to the block document, we must register the events we defined. We can register event handler using on event API. An event handler is responsible for converting any incoming events into zero or more outgoing states. I copy exactly the same code that is in the block document and only change its event to display search towards that we defined. We have two parameters here called emit and event. Event is an instance of the event we registered and we can use this to access its fields. 
and image can be used to image zero or more states in response to the incoming event. This means that we can change the state of the application using this. Now inside this function we can do anything. As I said, we search for the word entered by the user in the list of words and if it is fine, we display it to the user. So first we need a list of words. So I'm going to define a list of words here like this. Now we have the list and we have to search the word we get from the user by the event inside this list. As you know, after searching, if there is a word, we have to show it to the user. So we have to define a list and if the word is found, add the word to that list and then show that list to the user. So first I define a list here called search the titles. Now we can use a loop to search in the list of words and by using the contains method, we check whether the word entered by the user is similar or not and if it is similar, we add it to the list of search titles. This is so simple. Now we need to change the state of the application and show the words that have been found. For this, we need to use emit and emit the loaded words state like this. This is not enough because we need to be able to display these words. For this, we need to define a list in the loaded words class like this and also we assign this argument in the class constructor. Now in the block file, we just need to pass the searched words to the loaded words class. Alright guys, we are almost done here. Now we have to go to the presentation. I have already made a very simple UI so that you don't get bored. Well, guys, now we should be able to use the block in UI. If you have watched part 5, I explained the block builder to you. Block builder handles building a widget in response to new state. We only need to use block builder in the widget that we are going to rebuild based on the new state. So, as it is clear, we want to rebuild this list of words. So, we must use block builder in the words widget. As you can see, we need to pass the block class and state base class that we defined to the block builder. Now, in the builder, we have to display the widget we want based on different states. And we can check this using the state parameter. For example, we can check if the state is equal to loaded words, return this list view. Now we have to load the words in this list view. Well, as we know, this state is an instance of loaded words, so we can access the words parameter. Therefore, we can set the length of the words in the item count. And we also set the value of the list of words in text so that we can show the words to the user. The reason why the builder shows us an error is that we have to return a default widget in the builder. And when none of the states were established, the builder shows that widget. For example, I return a container. It seems that we have done everything. Now we can restart the app and see the initial result. As you can see, we have the block provider error. As you know, the reason is that we didn't inject the search block in this page and the block builder cannot use the search block. We have different methods to solve this problem. In this project, I use the block provider. And in the next project, you will get to know other methods. To use the block provider, it is enough to wrap the material app in the main file inside the block provider and also specify that the search block is inject in the block provider and create method. Now, if we restart the app, we will see that there is no problem anymore. But as you can see, no list of words is shown. If we go to check the block class, we will see that in super, we set the initial state of the block equal to initial state class. But in UI, we didn't define any condition for it to return a widget if state was equal to initial. We can either define a condition in the UI or we can easily change the initial state to loaded words in the block and pass the words to it. Now, if we restart the app, we will see that the problem is fixed. Now it's time to do the search when the user searches in text field. We can call the search event and change the state and load the words that were found. For this, we must call the search word event in the onChange method. To access the block and its events, we can use a context.read in UI. I explained this method to you in the previous parts. So I also use this and call the search event and also pass the value entered by the user to the event. 
And finally, if we want to test now, we can see that our search is working well and we are changing the state of the widget by using block. It seems that we have done everything and we have reached the end of this video. We will have another project in the next video, so stay with me.